You ain't bout it, you ain't bout it, you ain't kick on the mic. You ain't bout it, you ain't bout it, you ain't kick on the mic. You can go and subscribe, cause I be on it right. You ain't bout it, you ain't bout it, you ain't kick on the mic. The Chicago Bears have officially mastered the art of losing. Bears fans, yesterday's loss to the Detroit Lions was probably one of the worst losses I have seen as a Bears fan in my short 26 years of life. Um, there is no excuse to lose a football game when you're up 26 to 14. 26 to 14 with 4 and 15 left to play. The Chicago Bears dominated in every single category. The Chicago Bears were absolutely giving it to the Detroit Lions. Even the fan base for the Detroit Lions was shocked. You could just see their face like, wow, the Chicago Bears really came to play today. The Bears were this close to an absolutely huge win. A win that would have altered Matt Eberflus's career in Chicago. A win that would have altered Justin Fields' career in Chicago. A win that would have altered Ryan Pohl's career in Chicago. This win would have been a statement win for the Chicago Bears. But once again, I always like to say that Bears fans can never have anything nice. Up 26 to 14 with four minutes and 15 seconds left to go. The Chicago Bears find a way to disappoint us once again. At this point, Bears fans, it's just inexcusable. It really just is inexcusable. Everyone knows what happened. 26-14, the Detroit Lions drive right down the field in a minute and 15 seconds to score a touchdown. 26-21 Bears. The Bears didn't have the opportunity to put this game to bed. Two straight handoffs by offensive of coordinator Luke Getze that lead to nothing. Then on a third and nine, Justin Fields throws an absolute dot to Tyler Scott. It just seemed like Tyler Scott uh, misjudged the throw. Slow down for a split second. If he doesn't slow down, it could possibly be a huge game ceiling catch to secure a statement win over a very good Detroit Lions team. But all in all, he's a rookie. I feel like he will learn from that mistake, and, and the next time he will make that big play. Then obviously the Detroit Lions get the football back. They go ahead and get a go-ahead score with ex-Bear David Montgomery. And on the final possession, obviously, Aiden Hutchinson seals the deal with a strip sack of Justin Fields that leads into a safety. The Detroit Lions complete a comeback win over the Chicago Bears by a score of 31-26. So, Bears fans, let's go ahead and reverse time here. Let's start off with that drive. 26-14, 4-15 left. The, the Chicago Bears defense played well all day. It is inexcusable to give up. A touchdown drive in a minute and 15 seconds. And this is not even me hating on the Chicago Bears defense because they played well. We're talking about four, three turnovers. Four turnovers in total. Obviously, the Chicago Bears special teams also got a huge takeaway. But the Chicago Bears defense played outstanding. I honestly give everybody on this football team, when I'm talking about the Chicago Bears players, their flowers for this game. Everything was executed perfectly. On that drive... That was a letdown by the Chicago Bears defense. But overall, they played really well. Then let's go ahead and go back to when the Chicago Bears were back on offense, 26 to 21, with a chance to seal the game. I think there was, what, two, two minutes and 59 seconds left at that time. Detroit Lions had all three of their timeouts. And, of course, they would have the two-minute warning as well. Luke Getze which for the most part, I think the first drive was outstanding. And then, you know, obviously you could tell that at some points uh, the offense looked stagnant. And, and that's what I kind of expect from Luke Getze at this point, a very inconsistent play caller. But on this drive, my main concern is why would you take it out of your best player's hands? And I'm insinuating, why would you take it out of quarterback Justin Fields' hands? Coming back from a thumb injury, Justin Fields, in my opinion, looked outstanding. You're talking about 16 for 23, 169 yards through the air with a touchdown pass, zero interceptions, and he also added 18 rushes for 104 yards. So we're looking at 273 total yards in his return 
against the number two team in the NFC, against a top 10 defense. Justin Fields really showed his worth in this game against the Detroit Lions. But on this final drive where we could have put the game to bed and cemented a statement win over the Detroit Lions, Luke Getze opts to run the ball twice, which trying to burn the timeouts. But once again, they had all three timeouts and a two-minute warning. So they instantly take the two timeouts. And then on third and nine, you decide to put the ball in Justin Fields' hands. Now we're at a third and nine. It's not like we're at a third and three. It's not like we're at a third and one. No, you decide to put the ball in Justin Fields' hands on a third and nine. Justin Fields proceeds. Obviously, you're basically saying, Justin Fields, bail us out of the situation. Make a big play. And that's exactly what Justin Fields did. He absolutely delivered a dime, an absolute dot to Tyler Scott. And once again, not going to hate on the rookie. He's a rookie. He'll make the play next time. But Tyler Scott slowed down on his route, slowed up on his route just for a split second, a split second. That made that catch a lot more difficult, but it was right. It, it was an absolute dot by quarterback Justin Fields. Bears fans, I know a lot of you guys are going to hate me for this. I know, I know there's a lot of Justin Fields haters per se, but this game is not on the Chicago Bears players whatsoever. This game is not on quarterback Justin Fields. This game is not on the Chicago Bears defense. This game is not on the Chicago Bears players on this football team. This game, this loss, is on the Chicago Bears coaching staff. Once again, Matt Eberflus and Luke Getz and the Chicago Bears coaching staff got everything they wanted. It was the perfect scenario to come out with a statement win against a quality Detroit Lions opponent. You dominated the time of possession. The Bears held the ball for 40 minutes and 24 seconds compared to the Detroit Lions 19 minutes and 36 seconds. We won the turnover battle by four to one. Your quarterback, Justin Fields, coming back from his dislocated thumb, gave you 273 total yards, played a clean football game. You guys can go ahead and talk about that fumble at the end of the game. It was the end of the game. Justin Fields came back and gave you 273 total yards, a touchdown, and played a clean game and gave you the opportunity to win that football game. He did more than enough to win this football game against the Detroit Lions. Once again, you guys understand I don't like talking about that stat, the, the quarterback stat of the record. This is the perfect example of why I talked about this on Friday. That we got to stop looking at that six and now 26 record for Justin Fields because that is not a quarterback stat. That is a team stat, and it proves my point in this game. Justin Fields has to play perfect football in order for this football team to win. Justin Fields cannot get past this coaching staff. Perfect situation for the coaching staff. Time of possession dominated. The turnover battle was won. Your quarterback played well. You got amazing play by DJ Moore. Seven catches, 96 yards, and a touchdown. Up by 12 with 415 left. And we still manage to lose this football game. Once again, the Chicago Bears have mastered the art of losing. Once again, looking at head coach Matt Eberflus. We should be used to this by now. I think him calling the defense has been really, really good. He's a hell of a defensive coordinator. I'll give him that. The defense has looked good. But as an overall head coach, game management is just terrible. Same with Luke Getze. When we need you the most on that final drive, 26 to 21, to put this game to bed, it would have been obvious to keep the ball in Justin Fields' hands. But you take it out of your best player's hands. Detroit really had no answer for Justin Fields. He was killing him with the RPO action all day long on the design QB runs all day long. But once again, the coaches, the Chicago Bears coaches, find a way to screw things up for the Chicago Bears. Matt Eberflus is still winless against NFC North opponents. Matt Eberflus is still yet to win back-to-back -back games as Chicago Bears head coach. Matt Eberflus is officially, is officially the worst head coach the Chicago Bears have ever had in franchise history. And I do not say that lightly. And for all the people saying that this is on Justin Fields, if you really think this game is on Justin Fields, you really do not understand football. 
Once again, 273 total yards. A 105.2 QB rating. Justin Fields did more than enough to win this football game. So this game is not on Justin Fields. This game is not on the Chicago Bears players. This game is once again on the Chicago Bears coaching staff. And once again, enough is enough. Of course, the McCaskey family is not going to fire in season, but I think we've seen what the problem is. The problem is Matt Eberflus, even though he's been looking really good as defensive coordinator, as overall head coach, it's just not working. We know the problem is offensive coordinator Luke Getze. We have the talent on this roster. I feel like we have our quarterback in Justin Fields. It's so simple. What the Chicago Bears plan should be moving forward is keeping Justin Fields and continue to build around the kid. Draft Marvin Harrison Jr. Draft the best edge rusher or offensive lineman. Continue to build around quarterback Justin Fields. This Bears team has the talent, but the coaching continues to get in the way. They have mastered the art of losing in Chicago. It's just ridiculous at this point. There's nothing else left to say. 26-14. Up by 12 at 4-15. You're not supposed to lose, fo- lose football games. Especially when you dominated a really good Detroit Lions team. Even the Detroit Lions players on the sidelines stunned with their heads down. The Chicago Bears were giving it to the Detroit Lions. And for once again, for all the Justin Fields haters saying that this game was on Justin Fields, you do not know football. Rewatch the game and really tell me with your honest opinion that that game was on Justin Fields. You don't know football. After he lit up the commanders, put up 40 points. After he lit up the Denver Broncos. You said, oh, those weren't against good defenses. Well, guess what? He just did it against a top 10 NFL defense in Detroit. The number two team in the NFC. Played an outstanding football game. Coming back from a dislocated thumb. And some of the throws that he was making was outstanding. He looked poised in the pocket. Making some outstanding throws. Doing everything he can to put the Chicago Bears in position to win this football game, which he did. Justin Fields and the Chicago Bears defense had the Bears up by 12 points with 4.15 left. And once again, the Chicago Bears coaches get in the way. As far as I'm concerned, Bears fans, the Chicago Bears have the pieces in place. And once again, coaching matters. We have seen this story with Matt Eberflus over and over and over again in his two years as a Chicago Bears head coach, him blowing leads. He's already done it twice this season, once against the Denver Broncos and now against the Detroit Lions. The Bears can easily be five and six right now in the thick of the playoff hunt. But once again, we are now looking at another wasted season here in Chicago. What is the vision? What is the future of this football team? When you look at the schedule, there's there's definitely a couple of more winnable games. The Falcons, the Cardinals, I could say even the Green Bay Packers. Also, we just seen that we can play with the Detroit Lions as well. Maybe we, we can even beat the Minnesota Vikings. The problem with this football team isn't the players. And my problem with this football team is the coaching staff. And my problem with Matt Eberflux is he never takes accountability. Some coaches will come to the podium and say, you know what? That was that one's on me. We got great play from Justin. We got outstanding play from our defense. We got outstanding play from the special teams. We dominated the time of possession. This one falls on me and the coaching staff. We have to be better. No, Matt Eberflux comes to the podium and says, you know what? We just have to execute better down the stretch. The Bears played a really good football game until four minutes and 15 seconds left to go, and then everything imploded. 
the Chicago Bears fan base can never have anything nice. And once again, as far as I'm concerned, we have our quarterback one in Justin Fields. We have our franchise quarterback in Justin Fields. Adam Schefter even came out before yesterday's game and said the Chicago Bears organization, Ryan Poles, would have to be blown away by another quarterback prospect to move on from Justin Fields. As far as I'm concerned, all Justin Fields has to do is continue to play the way that he did against the Detroit Lions. If he could do that six more times, the Chicago Bears have their answer. Keep Justin Fields and continue to build around him. Get rid of offensive coordinator Luke Getze at least. They're probably going to keep Matt Eberflus for one more year because just how well the defense is playing. But at least get rid of Luke Getze and get a new offensive coordinator in here to really help Justin Fields. Draft Marvin Harrison Jr. Take the best edge rusher or take the best offensive lineman and continue to build around Justin Fields. But as far as I'm concerned, Bears fans, coaching has to be better. Coaching matters. This loss against the Detroit Lions is on the coaching staff. And that's all I have to say about that. So before I let you guys go, let me ask you guys this. Who do you place the blame on this disastrous loss to the Detroit Lions? Let me know down below in the comment section. Before I let you guys go, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification to catch all Bears content right here on the podcast. Make sure you follow me on all my social media platforms. Make sure you share this episode of Kick on the Mic with every single Bears fan that you know. Better than that, be back for all new Bears podcast right here on Keek on the Mic. Thanks, guys. And as always, bear down. You've been listening to Keek on the Mic, a podcast all about the Chicago Bears. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification to catch all Bears content right here on the podcast. Thanks, guys. And bear down. Hey.